this is the thinnest 15 inch gaming laptop that I've ever got my hands on. It's called the Alienware X15 R2 or Revision 2. Now, if you recall, I checked out its baby brother, the X14 a few months ago, and the performance was pretty respectable for its size. But if you're looking for a little bit more power, a bigger display, and if you don't want something big and bulky, well, the X15 could potentially be an excellent option uh, to consider. But is it any good? Let's find out. First things first, let's get pricing out of the way. The base model starts at $2,000 and it features a Core i7-12700H, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory at 5200 megahertz, half a terabyte of storage, and an RTX 3060 graphics card. You also get a 1080p 165 hertz display. Our spec comes with twice the memory, two terabytes of storage, an RTX 3070 Ti, and a quad HD 240 hertz display. That's a $750 premium over the base. Now you can certainly load this thing with even more power like a Core i9 CPU and a 3080 Ti for roughly $3,600 US. Now that's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. However, if you compare this to something like the Razer Blade 15, which is its main competition, it's a few hundred dollars cheaper spec to spec. Plus the X15 looks cooler. Speaking of which, the design is very reminiscent of the X14. It still features this beautiful lunar light soft textured surface that's unique compared to what I've seen with the competition. Now, unlike the X14, the X15 comes with this stadium lighting. It's essentially a halo light strip around the ports at the back, and it looks really cool. It's got a bunch of lighting effects that you can customize through Alienware's command center. Uh, you also get that massive 15 text that's laser etched on the lid. Build quality is fantastic. The whole chassis is made out of CNC aluminum. The hinge is also really strong and it's smooth to open with just one hand, so that's great. Keep in mind that it doesn't feature that custom patented dual torque hinge system like the X14, but that's obvious since there's just more room for Alienware to accommodate all the hardware. But this extension at the back still results in a wider footprint compared to some of the other 15 inch gaming laptops. Uh, I actually really had a lot of trouble fitting this thing inside my backpack, so please be aware of that. It's still coming at a remarkably thin 0.62 inches or 15.9 millimeters. That's one millimeter thinner than the Blade 15, which isn't a huge difference, but um, I will say that it's slightly heavier than the Blade 15. The power adapter is sized appropriately. It's rated for 240 watts and it uses a barrel stock connector to juice up the battery. And there's an LED indicator to showcase the power status, but that doesn't reflect the actual status of the battery. It's just there to indicate power. And now let's take a moment to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor. Oh, what a great day. Designed and miniaturized in Sweden, you can now nano and mini with the Meshify 2 and the Find 7 series. Wow. Everyone's been asking Fractal to complete the series for that iconic experience, just on a smaller package. Always capable in the right hands. Some might say these are cute. I say they're very classy. See you later. All right, so if you look at the interior space of the X15 R2, you'll notice it's a pretty standard layout. However, towards the right-hand side, there are a few extra keys for quick access to media playback functions. So you have mic mute uh, and the ability to adjust your volume levels. And towards the left-hand side, you have quick access to switching between different performance modes by just clicking function and F1. And then you also have the ability to uh, remap macros from F2 to F6. And that can be done through Alienware's command center. So if you want to do in-game or something else, uh, that is completely up to your discretion. Now the switches themselves are really good. I was surprised at how much feedback I was able to provide because it's 1.2 millimeters of key travel. And that's impressive considering this is only a chassis that's 15.9 millimeters thin. So good stuff Alienware. Here's how it sounds. Now these keys feature per key RGB lighting and they look absolutely gorgeous guys. There's very less light spill and this is exactly what keyboard backlighting should look like on gaming laptops. The trackpad on the X15 in my opinion is somewhat shorter compared to some of the other 15 inch gaming laptops because uh, when you look at the competition, most of them actually take almost half of the keyboard area. This is relatively short. I mean, it gets the job done. I will say the surface is very smooth and very quick to zoom in and move between desktops using Windows gestures uh, and the primary left and right click buttons are nicely defined. The majority of the ports are located at the back for easier cable management. You get a pretty decent selection as well. So there's a full size HDMI 2.1 port, Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that also functions as DisplayPort pass-through and power delivery, a micro SD card reader, a Thunderbolt 4 port, and a USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 port. 
The power port is located on the left-hand side and towards the right, you'll find the audio jack. Now, Dell also includes a Type-C to RJ45 dongle in the box for those who require a hardline connection. This is what the webcam looks like on the Alienware X15 R2. Now, they are using a 720p sensor, so the detail is not the greatest, but I do like the skin tones coming out of the sensor. It is a little bit more on the warmer side, which is my personal preference. Uh, and the microphone sounds decent. I mean, it's not going to win any awards, but uh, it should get the job done for casual meetings and things like that. Now, Dell has implemented two front-facing speakers on the X15 for better audio projection, and it sounds pretty good. There is good clarity with high-end frequencies, but it lacks bass. So you won't really enjoy it that much if you listen to a lot of hip-hop music. The display spans across 15.6 inches, and the spec that I have over here includes Quad HD at 240 hertz with a two millisecond response time. Needless to say, this is a really good panel to game with, guys. My sweet spot for scaling is around 150%, and the content is really sharp. The colors are vivid for an IPS-like panel since it covers 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 100% P3. These numbers are awesome for anyone who's looking to get into content creation as well. Now, if there are any software engineers at Alienware watching this video, please fix your command center. I almost broke my head navigating through this UI. Everything is scattered across, it lacks organization, and oftentimes it refuses to talk to the lighting system on the X15. It also takes 30 seconds to load up after you reboot the system. Now, if we get under the hood of the X15 R2, you'll notice that it has a very unique cooling system compared to the other 15-inch gaming laptops. So as you can see, Alienware has incorporated four fans. They call it a Chirotech patented design cooling technology. Essentially, these two fans are supposed to provide more cooling towards the internal components, which then reduces higher temperatures, meaning improved performance, but we'll test that out later on. They've also used a special thermal compound for the CPU and the GPU. They call it gallium silicone material. So again, these are some things that you'll have to validate during the performance segment. And the other thing you'll notice is that the memory is soldered onto the PCB. So you only get one shot at configuring this through the website. And in terms of storage, you get two M.2 slots. One of them is already preoccupied and the drive speeds are really fast for a Gen 4 SSD, but of course you can go crazy with a RAID 0 setup if you're crazy about uh, drive speed performance. Now, what about battery life? Well, interestingly, Alienware has equipped it with a pretty big 87 watt hour battery. So that should technically make the X15 a perfect fit when you're on the go, right? Well, no, not at all. I can't believe I'm saying this again, guys, but even now, all these months after its launch, on the lake still gets terrible battery life in light load scenarios like simple web browsing and document use. I mean, these numbers might have been good a few years ago, but they're pathetic in 2022. The only time when the bigger battery can sort of flex its muscles is when the system's under a heavier load. But then again, the time away from a plug gets cratered because of the higher wattage 12700H Alienware has crammed inside this chassis. And speaking of wattage, laptop performance lives or dies by the amount of power being pushed to the processor and graphics. Some ultra high-end gaming laptops like the Blade 15 cap performance at such a low level. And in some cases, it gets beaten by the budget machines. Meanwhile, others just push things to the absolute limit. So here's the deal with how the X15 actually behaves on the CPU side through its five modes. Full speed, performance, and balanced all run the processor above 75 watts, and that's some of the highest we've seen from any Alder Lake laptop so far. That leads to really impressive clock speeds too, but there's a trade-off of really high temperatures. Actually, only quiet and battery saver modes have sort of okay heat management, but they're still hotter than I like. Flipping to the GPU side, and it's pretty obvious, Alienware's thought process here is go big or go home. In full speed mode, the RTX 3070 Ti sucks back a crazy amount of juice, but it also gets super loud. Meanwhile, performance and balance still get the GPU humming along at some of the highest power levels we've seen on a gaming laptop this year, while being a lot easier on the ears. And quiet and battery saver, well, those actually get reasonable power levels as well, which is a bit weird since they usually get kneecapped big time. I should also mention that during idle scenarios, the second fan on the right-hand side of this laptop ramps up for no reason, even in quiet mode. It just got so annoying to a point where I had to reboot the system. That being said, what really blew my mind was how well Alienware's managed their external temperatures even with such hot running components. I mean, look at this thing. While there's a hot spot at the top of the chassis, all the important areas are completely cool when compared to the competition. Not only that, but all the hot air is exhausted out the back, so you don't have to worry about toasting your mouse hand either. 
I am back. To say the Nano has this really clever fan shroud to direct the airflow directly into the main chamber, while the Mini is all about reviving that whole MicroTX form factor. So join the Nano Mini Club with the Meshify 2 and the Define 7 series. Explore all the case options down below. I'm out for real this time. So I hope that set the stage for the performance segment. And as I'm sure you can imagine, when you consider how portable the X15 is, this thing can actually put down some absolutely ridiculous numbers because of how Alienware manages their power envelopes. Other than the low single thread result that's due to the internal caps of the 12700H, this laptop is one of the fastest 15 inch gaming machines I've ever tested. You might notice as we go through these charts that it can easily keep up with bigger, thicker and heavier devices like the SCAR 17 and the Helios 300, while also managing to start pretty far ahead of something like the Legion 5i Pro. The only thing we all have to remember is that the 5i Pro also costs a whole lot less than the X15, especially when Lenovo has one of their usual sales. But the main reason why the X15 is so competitive is the fact that its processor delivers consistent performance rather than having its clock speeds and power gradually drop in longer tests here. It also helps that it's backed up by an RTX 3070 Ti for NLEs like Resolve and Premiere. And gaming is about what you'd expect with an RTX 3070 Ti running along 105 watts. At 1080p gaming on these laptops, it's still somewhat CPU limited, but Alienware manages to put down some really good numbers. But look, we have to be realistic. If you're going for the ultimate bang for buck and you don't care about portability, there are other laptops that'll give you a lot more performance, for the money. On the other hand, if you opt for the high resolution display, things can actually get a little bit more interesting and the processor takes a bit of a backseat. And that means the RTX 3070 Ti can really start to stretch its legs and there's hardly any difference between the three fastest gaming laptops in these charts. But at least with the X15, you get a laptop you can pretty much take with you anywhere you go with a compatible backpack instead of a massive brick like the SCAR 17 and the Helios 300. So here's a deal with the X15 R2 from Alienware. It's really thin, and the gaming performance is absolutely amazing considering its size. I really have to give it to the engineers who have designed this chassis. It also looks really cool with the halo lighting at the front and this beautiful soft white texture. I'm not sure about durability, but we'll have to have to wait and see how that goes over long-term use. I just wish if it came with a 16 by 10 display, a bigger trackpad, better battery life, but we all know that that's an Intel all the late problem and the command center software could use some serious work. In terms of price, it's respectable, not cheap, but respectable when you compare it to its main rival, the Blade 15. And if you're someone who's looking for something that just screams gaming all over the place, then I think you should consider the Alienware X15. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about the thinnest 15 inch gaming laptop that you can find, at least that the one that has crossed my studio. Let us know what you guys think about it in the comments. I'm Ebro with Hardware Canucks. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, and spend responsibly.